G'day folks, and welcome to this quick example of play from uh, Scenario 1, The Fight for Kessinik from Wacht am Rhein. Uh, this is part of my Learning Goss uh, series. I'm now pretty much through the rulebook and have commenced this first scenario. I'm one turn in. I think this is a uh, pretty much a one-day, one, one day, um, several turn scenario. Uh, so I'm up to the second turn now, and the Americans have made good progress. This is a really good scenario. It doesn't require sort of knowledge of supply rules, doesn't require deep knowledge of artillery. It kind of abstracts uh, barrage points, so you can just kind of directly apply those barrage points. Keep in mind, I'm learning. This is my very first foray, so there will very likely be rules goofs. If you see anything, please let me know. Um, the idea here is not to kind of teach you how the game works, but to kind of document um, my process and to kind of show how I've, I'm jumping into the series via this first scenario and kind of showcase um, what this first scenario in Wachtam Ryan is like from a new player's perspective. So as I said, the Americans have made pretty good progress. Um, the Germans have just had their turn and they've pulled back. The, the Americans need to capture this hex here, 5510, and this hex here, 5608. That's Kessenik there. It's, as you can see there, a vantage point, that little triangle. Um, the Americans have inflicted some casualties on the Germans already. Uh, you'll notice these M4 companies. What we do is we start off with this big uh, M4... Uh, battalion, and I've broken that down at the start of the scenario. You're allowed to break it down into three smaller companies. Uh, so it distributes their strength, but it brings in particular that armor factor to three different stacks, sending the companies out to different to, to help with different infantry uh, battalions to give them that armor in, in their attack. So now, at the start of the turn, um, we can, we're at basically the mode de de determination phase. This is a very abbreviated sequence of play. We head straight into mode determination phase, and basically the Americans want to attack, and they want to bring their best effort. So, <laughs> in theory, I should be putting these assault markers down, prepared assault markers down on all uh, my stacks. This gives them a column shift in attack, it enables them all to attack, and it, it, it facilitates multi-hex attacks as well. It is somewhat limiting in, uh, in terms of their movement. Each of these, uh, I think the leg movements can only move one, one hex. And mech units might be able to move two. Um, with that done, we now move to the construction phase. Now, yes, the Germans had a construction phase, but they pulled away from... Um, where they were. The engineers were up here and they've pulled away. One of the issues I've had with this um, map is sort of dis discerning the, the terrain features. I think these are woods and I think these are forests. In fact, I think this is rough forest because this is clear terrain and this is rough. I think this is the merger of rough with forest. I notice this little green bit here. I think that's a woods. So there's a difference between woods and forests in terms of um, their terrain benefits. So there's no construction for the Americans. They can go straight into um, the move phase. And basically we need to attack this hex with its defense of nine and a, an AT rating of one. So I'm gonna bring pretty much this whole stack in here um, adjacent. They're just gonna move one hex into there. They should be fine. I then really want to bring as much as I can to attack this hex with its defense of 12. That's going to be pretty tough. Um, and then for these anti-tank, uh, this anti-tank company. Um, and how am I going to do this? So this is a very reduced, this is down to a company size. I'll move these guys into here as well. Okay, and we'll basically try to bring all these forces to bear against there. So pretty straightforward movement, just one hex movement, very focused scenario. Um, don't worry too much about roads. You do have to be mindful of retreat paths. Um, there are no entrenchments yet, so we don't have to worry about sort of movement halts. 
Uh, what else? Oh, there is constricted terrain. So we do need to look in here and note that there is no constricted terrain there. That's good. Um, we were dealing with some earlier in this hex. So those dotted lines, that's constricted terrain. That limits the number of attackers that can attack into that hex per adjacent hex. We now move to the combat phase. And in the combat phase, uh, there's a special sort of artillery. We would look at the fire support section um, first. In fact, this is, first of all, we get to the tactical uh, assault designation section. I'm not designating anything for TAC assault. We then go to, uh, normally you go reinforcement replacements, then the fire support uh, section. And there are three kind of sub-segments to this segment. Um, but to really streamline things and show you how this works, I'm going to jump straight to the active player declaring their artillery missions. Now, as I said, the Americans have 16 barrage factors. And because... Oh, look, I might split them eight here and eight here. So we're designating two different missions. A mission here with a strength of eight being spotted by uh, that battalion and a mission here with a strength of eight being spotted by, let's say, that battalion. Now, you do have to designate a spotter. I'm just kind of highlighting that you do have to designate a spotter to see the target hex. There's no problem there. Um, they're in prepared assault, so they're getting ready to move in. So they're really keeping their eyes on those target hexes. So there's no problem there with spotting that hex. If you're playing two-player, you'd go through this much more slowly and methodically. So let's try this hex here. Well, that is also, that also has obstructed terrain. Um, Okay, it's a mission with a strength, let's say medium capacity, it could even be heavy capacity, but in any case, a strength of eight. Um, we determine the fire mission die roll modifiers that apply. And these are things such as terrain, defensive works, armor, unit density, and various other conditions. Okay, so let's have a think through this. What's the best terrain in this hex? It is that rough wooded terrain. And if I consult the what chart I'm looking for here, I'm looking for the fire support table. And I look at terrain and I note that um, woods confers a negative one Dice roll modifier. Okay, so fire strength of eight. Look at negative one. There are no defensive works in that hex. This is not a hex made up of armor, so I don't need to worry about that um, pure armor dice roll modifier. Unit density. We have got one, two, three, four steps in that hex. So there are no modifiers for unit density. Uh, there's no vantage point, it's not an unobserved target, they're not in strap mode, no other weather conditions that apply. So basically the modifier to this uh, is just a net negative one. To resolve this, we simply roll a d10. The result is a five. Minus one is a four. I add that to the fire strength, which was eight to give me a total of 12. I consult now, I'll bring this chart up very briefly for you, the resolution. You can see on 12 there, right in the center, we have an AS1. Okay, this is the fire support table. You can see that that uh, forest dice roll modifier there, negative one, 12, AS1. That means we place an artillery shift marker on that hex and they suffer one numerical hit okay the player may choose to take the first numerical hit as a step loss 
or as a retreat. Now, because this is the vital objective hex, they are going to choose to take this as a step loss. Um, and they follow the procedures in 11.6.2, a unit of their choice. Okay, so who are we going to choose? I think we'll choose, if we take it from the engineers, they go down to two. If we take it from them, they'll go down to three. Probably doesn't matter too much. Um, let's take it from the engineers, I guess, they're on top. So they just flip over, now they're a one step unit. And that is the resolution of that first barrage. Okay, so to repeat the same thing over here, again, we have another mission with a strength of eight. They are defending in rough terrain. Notice the vent. Actually, they have a, a village there, I think it is. Um, is it a village or a town? It might actually be a... Might be a town. It's a village, sorry. Okay, so they have a village which provides a negative two dice roll modifier. Um, they have one, two, three, four, five steps, which is a plus, is it plus one modifier? Yes. So negative two plus one is a negative one modifier to the roll. I uh, don't think there's any, there's no armor in that hex. Okay, we're not targeting this one, we're targeting this one up here. So we roll the die, we get a result of 10, um, minus one is nine, plus the eight is 17. We get an armor shift and two step losses. And again, this is an important step. Uh, an important hex. So we're going to take these as step losses. Ah, there's a vantage point as well. Um, I think if there's a vantage point in the hex, it's a, it's a what is it, other conditions? Let me just double check. Um, if it's a modifier for No, it isn't. Oh, which vantage point? When the spotting unit occupies a vantage point. Sorry. Um, I don't know if we have any... Could we say that a spotting unit? No. Okay, so it's two step losses among these guys. Now, there are max step losses. And what that basically means is each unit has to take one... Or can take at most one step loss in combat. So what I'm doing is I'm placing these little markers below these units like this to show that they're now down to their last step. What that does is it halves their combat values. So that goes down to a from a 3 to 1.5 rounded up. And it's the same with the remnants of that unit whilst uh, the AT company will remain strong. They do still have that artillery shift on top which will impact their combat in just a moment. Okay, so they chose to take both of those steps as um, numerical step losses. Or oh, sorry, they take the first one. The first one has to be a step loss. The second one, ah, they can. They don't have to do it. They must make a, a proficiency rating check using the defensive PR which they pass. So it's actually, if they pass that, the target unit remains in the hex. If they fail, they apply. Okay, so no, no worries. We ignore that, uh, that second hit. It's one mandatory hit. The first one is a hit. The second one is a proficiency rating check. And that was it, that ends it now. We don't have to worry about third, fourth hits. Okay, so we say in the, in the hex, we only lose the one step. We now shift to the attacker, it's called the attacker status adjustment check. We make sure basically that um, we're not exceeding our 
um, limits on the number of attacks we can conduct. This is equal to the ammunition depletion value of the superior HQ. We make sure that, for example, if there's an assault, prepared assault unit back here and there's nobody to assault, they'd remove that. But as it stands, these units will join in to attack here and this unit will attack here. So everything's legal there. If I decide I don't want to attack, I think I'm allowed to voluntarily remove those under certain circumstances. Okay, let's get to the ground assault segment. To do this, we first of all identify the defender's hex. So let's start down here. We're going to def uh, attack this location. All right, they've got a defense of seven there, so they're going to be pretty tough, in fact. Um, all right, defense of seven. Um, I'm going to be attacking from here, and I have four, eight, 13. Ouch. So it's just going to be one to one odds. Um, we determine their status. There's no surrender check. There's no standoff. Uh, they're fine with supply. It's not a night turn. Um, they haven't retreated earlier in this game turn. There's no bridge that they want to demolish. We now determine the ground assault value, which is pretty much what I've just done. There are no combat strength modifiers that apply. This is if you're attacking across a river or sort of running low on supply. Um, or actually, the defender... No, the defender is not fatigued, so that's okay. Uh, we do have that combined arms benefit for the attacker because they have armor and infantry, so we don't suffer the, suffer the pure AFE penalty. With the ratio, the base ratio is then 1 to 1, 13 to 7. We now determine column shifts. Now, because they're in prepared assault mode, we get one column shift, so we're looking at 2 to 1. Um, there is an AS marker, which gives us 3 to 1. I believe that's it. The defender column shifts. If they occupy a vantage point, they don't. There is no artillery shift on the attackers. Um, that's about it for them as well. So we're coming now at 3 to 1, and the line they were using is the forest line, which is line 3. I'll point this out in just a moment. There are... Um, yeah, there's no defensive works there, so we don't have to worry about attacking engineers. So we're looking at line 3. Now we determine dice roll modifiers for the combat. First of all, Proficiency rating differential. We're looking at, for example, we'll pick a lead unit and let's say, yeah, let's say that infantry there, that infantry battalion, proficiency rating of six versus the defense proficiency rating, oh, the engineers of seven. So the, the, the defenders will get a one bonus for having that one difference. So they have a bonus. We have no combat reserve. Regimental integrity. There's no adjacent units adjacent to any of these, so no regimental integrity. We do, however, now work out our armor bonus. And I've got armor of four, attacking armor of four, defensive AT of one. So we do four minus one is three potential bonuses. And this is a part of the rules I'm probably most uncertain about, so prepare for some mistakes here. Four minus one is three. Um... That's the number of bon potential bonuses I get. But then, um, that's it's limited by the terrain feature. So in a forest, I need to find uh, the right chart. In a forest, here it is. Where is forest there? The modifier is negative two. And the maximum, maximum, uh, what is that? Maximum benefit you can get is one. So what that means is that the allied tank, because it's attacking into a forest, it's three minus two, which is one, which is right as its maximum. So that one cancels out the German proficiency rating bonus. So currently I'm sitting on a bonus of zero. There are no other bonuses that apply, so there are no dice roll modifiers in this combat. 
We then bring up the CRT and as I said we're looking at we're looking at line three three to one so you look see there line three three to one that's row H that's what we're rolling on I roll the die for the attacker and they get a 64 all right so row H 64 basically you find the lowest next lowest number 55 and we have an asterisk one result there okay so it's basically we're looking at 55 to 74 um, 64 lies between that one asterisk all right so let's let's uh let's keep in mind that one asterisk the defender then rolls now you get a 23 so we go to the defender down here 23 oh and they get a 2-1 result that's actually really good the attacker determines uh, resolves their hits first so 2-1 means the one in, in parentheses means one mandatory hit and it has to be taken on the lead unit first ah so they were, they were on a vantage point um all right, that's one hit, and again, that brings them down to a one-step unit. There are now two discretionary hits. And... Um, they've got some options here. They either attempt to hold their... I think the affected player must declare they'll attempt to hold, they'll conduct a retreat, or a full retreat. Look, there's still two turns left in this scenario, and I don't want to... Like I can try to conduct a proficiency rating check with the lowest PR. That'd be, I believe, that'd be a seven. Um, if I pass... Okay, let's try that. I need a six or less. I succeed. Okay, so I've passed that proficiency rating check. I hold my ground. I now resolve all remaining via step losses and fatigue, maximum of two as desired. And what I'm going to do here is basically place these guys under a fatigue marker. That halves their combat strength, but it keeps them in that hex. Now these guys have an asterisk one. What that means, that's the attacker done. The defenders now, asterisk one. The asterisk means they make a proficiency rating check. They pass. So there's no penalty for them there. The one is just a discretionary hit. And they will also attempt to hold their ground. So again, this requires a defensive proficiency rating check. They need a six or less. They pass. They hold their ground. There's no further penalty for the Germans. That's combat done. I now need to move on to this combat. But folks, I'll do that in just a moment. For now, I'll, um, I'll pause here. Hopefully it's giving you a sense of how fire support uh, we've done a little bit of prepared assault movement and combat all works um, there are many steps to it the rule book is very well written with regards to combat so there are some aspects of the rule book which can be confusing but the, the the combat section is pretty streamlined so folks as always thanks for watching and take care